and we are back. It is time for another episode of Ink Transfer Drawing with Mark Zimmerman. My name is Mark Zimmerman. I'm a visiting artist virtually at Sanford Arts or Sanford Clinic through the Sanford Arts program anyway. Uh, and what I'm doing is rolling a thin layer of ink out on a sheet of plexiglass so that I can do an ink transfer drawing. Um, I'm going to lay a sheet of paper on top of the ink. Tape it down. Line it up inside those tape, that little template of tape first. Tape it down. And then I want to know where that ink is at. And I've got it inside a little rectangle of tape. And I can poke this pen up into that corner. Drag it along the edge of the tape. That went too far, I can tell. That's just wild. There we are. There's the there's the tape. Uh, I'm looking at a photo of um, uh, I guess they're Gerbera or Gerbera or whatever daisies. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Um, I'm gonna put one about right here. I think I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out. So what's happening is I'm transferring ink to the front of this paper by drawing and eventually maybe rubbing on the back of this paper. Alright, so that's what's ever in the middle of a flower. I'll leave an leave some room for for um, for some watercolor when I'm all done. I think the plan is to. Put a little watercolor on this. Daisies are this plant. I think it's a daisy of some sort. Um, seems like every other petal is in front and every other petal is behind. Well, it seemed like that till I got to here and I looked at this. Well, I got to there, and then it seemed like several are behind. Huh. There I go. Huh, something like that anyway. Huh. <laughs> little flower is a little more complicated than I thought when I started drawing it. There's a little petal here, actually up on top. And then one here. And then one here. Huh. 
There we go. Uh, for some reason I see, I guess not some reason, I must be looking in underneath here and there are little petals down in here too. You'll notice I keep my hand up or off the paper when I draw. If I rest my hand on the back of this, it transfers ink as well. Um, the other flower in the photograph, and again, I'm working from a photograph, so I'm just drawing what I see. I don't actually know that much about the structure of these daisies, but I can draw what I see. This one's a little bit smaller. Hmm. I think I'm going to put them, I can't see anything down here, the photograph ends about right here, but um, actually here, I can put the photograph in the frame too and you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, I'm going to leave this third one out back here, it doesn't really show enough to bother with. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is... Um, Stick these in a little vase. Looks like uh, it comes down out of here and here. Quite a thick stem on these guys. Um, okay, let's bring that around. Let's bring it down and and we'll Just making this up. This, as you can see, is not part of the. Maybe I do need that third Gerber Daisy back here. I have a problem right here, of course. <laughs> oh, I should have thought of that earlier. Well, we'll just leave it. Oh, I think I know what I'll do. I'll put one down here too. And I think I want to measure something. I want something that there's kind of a magical 
division of this 11 inch um, distance, a golden section of it, is four and a quarter inches. So I'm going to do this at four and a quarter inches. And maybe I actually want to double down or double up on that. And so that's that. I think I'm going to do. Another kind of magical number, which is a golden section of a golden section of a golden section. There we go. Now, I said I could transfer a little ink just by touching it, too. So that's why I had to keep my hands up. Let's do that. Let's do, let's transfer a little bit up in here. And maybe just a tiny bit over here in this corner. Let's come back in here too. Cheat and use a bridge. This lets this holds my hand up for me. Uh, maybe just a teeny shadow back in here too. Let's peek, see what we have. And by golly, I think that'll work. I'm going to get the inky plate. The plexiglass is actually called a plate. Get that out of there. Come back with some um, watercolor. I might just put a board underneath here too. You can see what I was looking at. You'll also notice that the drawing is Reversed, it's like a mirror image of what I was, what I actually drew on the back. Uh, okay. So I've got some liquid watercolors over here. And I'll just drop some color in here and some color in here. That's a lot. Uh, I'm just kind of highlighting a few things. I guess if there's a shadow under that, there must be light on it, huh? Uh, 
a little too much paint over here and here. And now we're just going to work kind of light to dark. So I'm starting with my lightest colors, at least to begin with. And come back and a little, little bits of orange in here, a little bits of orange in there. Guess I'm making that one up. Uh, I don't know where else I need orange yet, so I'm going to switch. I want a bigger brush. Let's get the big one out. Yeah, I don't want a bigger brush yet. I want the littler brush still. The medium sized brush. I want to paint some shadows in here too on the on the stems. I don't always paint sideways, but I'm doing that so you can see what's happening. There we go. Oh, that's a, a stem. Let's paint this little thing here too. As if... Whoa, that's a lot of paint, Mark. A lot of paint, we better use it everywhere. Actually, maybe what we'll do is just dry that brush up, come back and pick up some of that a little bit. There we go. Now, big brush. Kind of wanted that yellow to dry a little bit. I don't want it to bleed too much into these. I'm going to change the color on these a little bit too. And And little spots that I miss are going to be just fine with me. They just become little spots in my painting that sparkle a little bit. And paintings that sparkle are not all bad. So instead of working very carefully to cover all my paper to get every spot, I'm actually going to work loosely enough that um, that I just kind of naturally miss some things, and I count those as happy accidents. I don't know. I've never actually sat through an episode of Bob Ross, but I think that's something he talked about was happy accidents. He at least seems like the kind of guy who would believe in happy accidents. So we're just going to let those happen. Let the painting be alive instead of working so hard to control everything. Uh, I think I want to turn it this way for just a little bit here. It's easier for me to make vertical strokes instead of side-to-side -side strokes. Let me see how dark the screen is. should be fine. Before that blue and yellow dry entirely, I'm going to just come back and turn both of them green so that one becomes a blue-green and one a yellow-green. And parts that I didn't touch at all. Just our green straight up. Let's get a little burnt sienna. Sienna is an earth tone, brown. And um, 
originally came from Siena, Italy. And the burnt Siena was just dirt from Siena, Italy that they toasted a little bit and turned it a little darker color. So this is burnt Siena. I don't know that they're still digging that dirt up in Italy to bring it to me, but that's the history of the color. Again, not being overly concerned about getting all those little white spots covered, going ahead and letting the painting sparkle a little bit. The other thing it does is it um, goes ahead and sort of acknowledges that those are not flowers, right? Those are Those are ink lines and paint on a on a piece of paper. That's what's real, right? The flowers are fake. And there's something kind of honest about going ahead and painting them as if they They are not, in fact, flowers, but they're, in fact, paint. So. Anybody ever listen to Lori Anderson? She said, let X equal X. So I'm going to let the paint equal paint. I also just realized I haven't heard or seen the puppy in here. I got a puppy in here with me today. Makes me just a little nervous that I haven't heard or seen the puppy lately. So, adding water to this to make it lighter. This is just a, this is actually a new color to me anyway. Um, it's not a color I've ever used in a palette before. But I'm liking it a lot. It's um, indigo. Kind of a low intensity blue violet a grayish blue violet and I'm, this is where I'm tipping that paint or the paint the painting and letting the water color just kind of run letting gravity do some of the painting for me Stay in the lines, huh? Wouldn't it be nice if there were points in life for staying in the lines? Okay. There's one more thing I want to do. Actually, two. I want just a little bit right here darker. <laughs> now we're getting fussy. Uh, and then I want to come back and add just a little bit, a little more shadow to those red flowers. Um, so I've got a purple here. Make them a little more varied. I suppose. Oh, and just a touch down here. We made that whole flower up. I can make up the highlights and shadows too. So, I always sign them in pencil. 
And we'll call this jar with daisies and sign it and date it 2020 and there is jar with daisies and I think if you like it you can have it uh, if no one else beats you to it so anyway I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, that's it for now bye bye